Hey there, good morning. Um, it is day 32. <clears throat> and today's scripture quote is coming from this upcoming gospel for fifth Sunday of Lent. And that's from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. So let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. And O Blessed Lady, spread the effective grace of thy flame and love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So I will read it from the USCCB's website because um, we just put a little clip here to fit in the book and it's a little bit longer. So it goes like this. Come Holy Spirit. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip who was from Beth Bethsaida in Galilee and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the man of for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what, I sh what should I say? Father, save me from this hour but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. When we plant a seed in the ground, that seed must itself must die and roots must sprout from it, producing a plant. Eventually, the flower and fruit of the plant grow, and the cycle continues again. In order for us to have eternal life, Jesus chose to die and to defeat death, to open for us the gates of heaven. Likewise, we too must die physically in order that our souls may have life with God eternally. During the time that we are here on earth, as we live life in our physical bodies, we will experience many little deaths that can help us bear much fruit. We must die to ourselves, our desires, our attachments, and anything else that is not leading us to God. We have this whole lifetime to work on this, but Lent helps us to hasten this process and focus our efforts. As we draw closer to the end of this Lenten season, let us persist in our efforts to produce much fruit. So ponder this as you meditate on this gospel today. What fruit have you experienced so far this Lent? What bad habits have you allowed to die this Lent? What good habits have taken root in your heart thus far? And then we will close with, again, I, I love this little prayer. Um, 
the nine month novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. It started March 12th and we're going to pray this prayer all the way up till December 12th. <laughs> so I've printed my own little paper so that I don't lose it. I have it on my phone. I have it everywhere. So that way I can make sure to do this prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Virgin Mother of God, we fly to your protection and beg your intercession against the darkness and sin which evermore envelop the world and menace the church. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, gave to us as our mother, gave, uh, gave you to us as our mother as he died on the cross for our salvation. So too, in 1531, when darkness and sin beset us. He sent you as Our Lady of Guadalupe on Tepeyac to lead us to him who alone is our light and our salvation. Through your apparition on Tepeyac and your abiding presence with us on this miraculous mantle of your message, St. Juan Diego, millions of souls converted to faith in your divine Son. Through this novena, and our consecration to you, we humbly implore your intercession for our daily conversion of life to him and the conversion of millions more who do not yet believe in him. In our home and in our nation, lead us to him who alone wins the victory over sin and darkness in us and in the world. Unite our hearts to you, Immaculate Heart, so that they unite our hearts to your heart, so that our hearts may find their true and lasting home in the most sacred heart of Jesus. Ever guide us along the pilgrimage of life to our eternal home with him. So may our hearts, one with yours, always trust in God's promise of salvation and his never-failing mercy towards all who turn to him with a humble and contrite heart. Through this novena and our consecration to you, O Virgin of Guadalupe, lead all souls in America and throughout the world to your divine Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a really beautiful prayer. If I could just read it right. <laughs> well, you have a blessed day and, you know, just really sit in, and this is such a beautiful scripture about <clears throat> you know, that grain falling to the ground and dying and realizing that even though that seed dies, great fruit comes from that death. It isn't just dying in vain, right? Um, and remember the scripture where that grain fell into thorns and the grain fell into weeds and then it fell into something that nourished it. Um, so just ask yourself, you know, if that part of you if you're working on a part of yourself that you are wanting to surrender to the Lord and you're wanting that part to die, are you nourishing that good habit, right? Are you, are you saying, okay, and use that seed as its food source, you know, use that motivation to grow. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a great aspect. If you realize that it's not more of, oh, but I'm going to have to give up this and I'm going to have to give up that. And I'm going to have to, yeah, but it's more of you're surrendering it. You are willingly laying it down at the foot of the cross. And it, instead of it being a burden, it becomes a beautiful sacrifice. And so with that sacrifice flourishes this beautiful fruit in your spiritual growth. So I know I have experienced many uh, little deaths throughout my faith journey and I'm I'm sure I'm not going to stop right it's it's a continual process of growth and so I pray that you are having a fruitful Lent thus far and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow have a blessed day bye